to embrace in the fight. I am Erica Lamar, your digital creator and host. And I know you guys see this huge smile on my face. It's because I just got back from the most amazing trip with my friends in Thailand. And I played tennis. I sampled all different types of food. We went to a beautiful island. We did so much stuff. And I finally had a time to relax. And even after returning from Thailand, I got another special treat. I had a chance to spend some time with my family, specifically my parents. And as I've said before, one of the things that a lot of people, you know, tend to take for granted is their loved ones, because you always assume that they'll be there because you are tied to them, you know, by blood. However, that may or may not be the case. So... I try to take as much time as I can to see, you know, my parents, to spend time with them, to talk with them. And if that's not something that you do, then I suggest that you try it. It is one of the most amazing things ever. And that's really what inspired this episode today. And what I really want to talk about today is what inspires you and what makes you move the way that you move. So... Over oh, the past few months, I've been contemplating a lot of different things in my life. You know, when someone comes in and they tell you that you have cancer and they don't know if it's spread and they don't know, you know, all these different things, you start to do like a mental inventory over your life. And when you do that, you start thinking about the things that you wish you could have done that you didn't do. And do you have enough time to do some other things that you would like to do? So now that I'm at a point where I'm They've removed my thyroid. Um, I haven't gotten any messages concerning any tumor markers being found. And I am still in the stages of them determining, you know, what uh, dosage of the levothyroxine that I'll actually be uh, taking for the rest of my life. So with all that, you know, going on, it's like, okay, I'm at a point where I should evaluate where I am and what I'm doing. And I sat down and I started to write those things that didn't bring me joy. So in the coming months, I put together a timeline that said, these things that don't bring me joy, how will I replace them in the coming months? Because some things, if you think about it, you can't just change just like that. Just imagine if you've been married, say to someone for 15, 20 years, and you realize that you were the only one that was always compromising. You were the only one that was always cleaning. You were always taking care of the kids. You were doing everything and they were living their best life. And you decide, you know, that this isn't, you know, for me because you found out, say they were cheating or it was domestic violence or something like that. And you decided to get out. Then you realize that your life surrounded completely around your family and you say to yourself you know do I really want to separate myself from this do I want to be miserable in a sense for the rest of my life or do I want to search and find what truly inspires me if you're out there listening and you find that it's very difficult for you to wake up and go to work each and every day or you wake up and you don't recognize who you've become or you wake up and you realize that you've only helped someone else live their best life all the time that they were hurting you. It's time to step out and figure out what it is that truly, truly inspires you. Now, how do you do that? So I've spent a lot of time, you know, in my word, trying to read, trying to understand, trying to get a better perspective about things that have been going on around me. And my prayer life has definitely increased. And I've stopped 
watching a lot of things that I would normally watch. Not that I watch a lot of TV anyway. Most folks tell you that I really don't watch TV because I don't. But there are a few things that I watch here and there. But now it's it's more uh, focused on things that, that feed my spirit. Because the things that feed my spirit, I found truly, truly inspire me. So while we were in Thailand, all the ladies that were seated around the table, they each talked about, you know, different things that are going on in their lives off camera. And I felt like, you know, I was light years <laughs> behind everybody that was talking because they say, say they had families, they had kids, they got businesses, they got all this different stuff going on. And I feel like, you know, I'm just kind of riding the wave in a sense. And I've never been the ride the wave kind of person. I've always wanted to be, you know, in the mix, in the middle of things, helping, moving, doing, changing, you know, things of that nature. But now I just, I just feel like I'm a shell of my former self. And it's really hard for me, you know, to say that out loud and to admit it, but I know once you once you release that, then it's easier to start over to build that foundation. And when I say start over, I don't necessarily mean you got to, you know, uproot yourself, move and run away. Because if you don't address the problem, that same problem you uprooted from, you moved away from, it's moving with you. It's getting in your suitcases. It's getting in your boxes. It's coming right along with you. So I'm saying I'm doing this uh Self-discovery is what Daphne called it when she was talking about uh, dating. But I'm doing uh, self-discovery of my personal slash professional life. Because personally, I, I sit here and I think about, you know, all the different relationships and folks that I've dealt with, you know, in my life from college until now. And I, I ask myself, what value did they bring to my life and what value did I bring to theirs? And to be honest, it's, it's quite a few of them where it's a bit sketchy, <laughs> where I can't say, you know, what they brought to me, but I can definitely tell you, you know, what I brought to them. And when it's one-sided like that, something, you know, in me should say, you know, this is one-sided. I shouldn't, you know, uh, go down this path. I shouldn't start this friendship. I shouldn't start this relationship. I shouldn't start, you know, this business partnership. I shouldn't do these things, but did it anyway. And even after several years of bumps and bruises, it seems like there's a pattern. So that lets me know that it's not all them. That it's something inherent in me that causes me to, I guess, be a glutton for punishment for lack of a better description. So I'm sitting here, you know, telling you all of this because I don't want you to go down the same path. I want you to be able to look in the mirror 10, 15, 20 years from now and say, you did the work. You searched yourself, found out what your inspiration was, and you went after it 100%. So when I was visiting with my parents, we were talking about things that have value. And there were a couple of things that, you know, my dad shared with me. And we actually, you know, were looking these items and these things up. And it was interesting that depending on where you auction certain things off, that the value you know, increases wherever it is, right? So with that being said, your value increases depending on where you place yourself. So follow me for a second. Imagine if, say you're in a classroom and you're the only person in that classroom that knows the answer to the question. You're the only one that can explain it. You're extremely valuable to that class. But what happens when you're in a classroom full of geniuses? Then you're on equal footing with these people, right? And everyone isn't coming directly to you for the answer. You're constantly having to fight for it and you're constantly having to prove yourself. Now, where will most people go? 
the majority of people will go to that first classroom because they'd rather be the go-to and not the person that's left behind or the person that has to constantly work. And I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm one of these people that like for people to come to me, you know, for information. But at the same time, I want to learn. I want to get information from other people as well. But my delivery may not be the greatest in a sense. And when I say that, I don't mean that I'm rude. I don't say that I'm, you know, negative or anything like that. It's nothing like that. When I say my delivery, it's like when I'm meeting people in in those type settings, it's it's almost like I'm soaking in more than I'm asking. And a lot of people who are mentors to me have told me, you know, they can't read my mind. But at the same time, I'm telling them that they're giving me what it is that I need. So when it comes to expression, that's something I definitely have to work on, especially when it comes to uh, personal things. Professionally, I'm doing you know really well with that. But when I'm trying to build myself personally, that part of me, I can be honest and say that it's a little bit of a struggle. Also, I found that when it comes down to inspiration, people have told me and it you know, it shocks me sometimes when they say that I actually inspire them. And then after they tell me why I I inspire them, I sit there and I say, you know, that that just came naturally to me. That's just who I am. And that's something that won't ever change about me. And one of the things that I was told that truly inspires people about me is that I'm very honest and very fair. And regardless of what it is, if you ask me, I'm going to tell you, depending on, you know, <laughs> the type of feelings you have, if they hurt easily or not, you know, hurt too easily, you, you have to determine, you know, whether or not you really want to ask me or not. So what type of person are you? Do people come to you? Are you a source of inspiration for them? Or on the flip side of it, are you the one that is constantly looking for inspiration, that's constantly moving, constantly seeking, constantly asking? Or are you like me, a little bit of both? Because I love, love, love to inspire children. Absolutely love to inspire children. Yeah, adults are cool, but kids, it, it just totally warms my heart. But at the same time, I want to soak up the inspiration of someone else. So I have some amazing line sisters that are doing some awesome things. And when I look at their stories on Facebook or I look at their Instagram, send them a text, uh, email, call, something like that. I, I try to just soak up that, that, that whole ambiance. I mean, it's just amazing to see all the movers and shakers that uh, pledged with me when I was in college. And then I go back to myself. And I know a lot of people probably do this. And I'm saying that. You shouldn't do it because your life is on track. God had plans for you, just like he has plans for me. Now that we make the best choices to get us to where we need to be, maybe not. Maybe not, you know, when we were in our 20s or our 30s. And now that I'm in my 40s, I'm looking back and I'm saying, you know what? Maybe I should have done that different. Maybe I should have done this different and I would be here or I would be there. Because financially, I could be light years ahead if I didn't have a soft heart. And I've had people come to me and borrow thousands of dollars. And that's something else I hate to admit as well. Because they borrowed it and I never saw them again. So you know how people say, oh, it was a cheap lesson. Yeah, it's a cheap lesson, but... You know, there's so much more that I could have done with that money. Like, say, for instance, I could have taken a few thousand dollars and put it into a stock. And by now, I'm a millionaire, but I'm not. Because I saw someone else with a need 
They said, I'm going to pay you back. And I knew it. I could hear it in my head. I could hear it in my heart that they weren't ever going to be able to give me that money back. And I used to try to make it sound good, uh, make it feel good to myself and say, you know what? Every time I give to somebody, God gives me so much more. But then at the same time, <laughs> I honestly think God got tired of it and say, look, every time I bless you, you're giving it all away. You're not planning it. You're not growing it. You're not purposing it for anything. You're just giving it away. And sometimes I often wondered if those people were in that position because he put them in that position and wanted to show them that he was God. And here I come along here, you know, take the money here. I'll help you. So he had to cut the lifeline off some kind of way to get them to come to him, right? So I just happened to be that lifeline. So now I'm at the point in my life where I have to make some different decisions. I have to make some changes in order to get to where I think or I believe I need to be by the time, you know, I want to retire. Now, a lot of folks say, oh, I want to work until, you know, I'm 65 to retirement age. I really don't. I never wanted to work until retirement. I always said I wanted to retire by the time I was 50. And if you've been watching, you know that I'm 45 and I'll be 46 this year. So that's a very short time. However, it's very possible because there are a lot of different things that you can do. And I watch a lot of different podcasts and I've been looking at and trying some different things which have proven to work for others. And it's just a matter of time before it works for me. Because I always say what he's done for others, he'll do for me. And as long as I'm putting in the work, having faith, praying, reading, and trying to do everything I can to get to that point, I feel like he's going to bless it. So I don't, I don't cry over spilled milk. I just pray that he hears my prayer and I know he hears it. So that's why I continue to work. So if you start seeing some changes in the way I move and changes in the way that I'm doing things, it has absolutely nothing to you, nothing to do with you in a sense, I should say. But it has all to do with the work that God is doing in me. This way, my testimony can be even more inspirational to people that are listening. Just think about it. I'm telling you that God is allowing me to survive this bout with cancer. And this is round two. He's allowing me to go through all of the things that I've been fighting with and dealing with, with the company that I work for. And even though that has been one of the hardest things that I've ever had to deal with in my life, I know that I'm gonna come out just fine on the other side. Because could you imagine working since you were 16 years old, 16 years old, and 28 years later, the first time that you were ever written up for anything and everything that the person had to write or say about you, they had no evidence. They had nothing. But yet and still, no one did their due diligence to research any of the things that this person said. And it's all being held against you. Just imagine how that feels when you know that every day you come to work, you want to do your very best and you want to do nothing but help and inspire people. So I go through that on a daily basis and yet I still smile, yet I still give you my very, very best because I know that I'm not working for them. I'm working unto God. I am supposed to shine my light before men so that they'll be drawn to him. So imagine if I were to go to work every day, cussing, fussing, yelling, acting stupid. Nobody would want to hear about the Christ that I serve. No one would know about God. Nobody would want to know about the Holy Spirit. They wouldn't want to know about nothing that I would have to say concerning anything gentle, kind, loving, giving. 
Not if I had that type of attitude. And if you know me, you know me well, you know that's not the type of person I am anyway. And I have people come to me all the time asking me, why don't you just walk away? Walking away was never an option in a sense. Because the people that work for me, I care for them dearly. They are a group of amazing guys that have families. They either married with kids or they are married with kids and grandkids. And they come to work to do their very best. And all they want to be is heard and appreciated. And a lot of people don't realize that people don't leave companies because the company is bad. They leave companies because of how they're being treated. And if you notice, it's it, it's been a mass exodus. In a lot of companies, you see people have gone out and ventured to start businesses on their own, especially like during COVID, because people realized how important family and how important love is. So it's like, why why torture, torture yourself when they don't want you there anyway? So when you start thinking about, you know, the greater good, I'm asking that you include yourself. Because this is something that I had to learn that I have to do as well. And as my life is evolving, as it's changing, as I'm going through this, I'm learning that this is a process. And I'm learning that I don't have to carry that stuff with me. I don't have to carry it home. I don't even have to think about it, you know, before I fall asleep. Because at one point, it was always on my mind. But I had to realize that if something were to happen to me today, my job would be on the board tomorrow. And a few people, sure, they would be like, oh, she was a great person. But what impact would I have made? How will I have inspired others? So at the beginning of this episode, I was talking about visiting with my friends in Thailand and visiting with my parents. And I talked about how they were both, you know, inspirations, but I didn't go deeply into why my parents inspired me. So let me just explain to you something about both of my parents. My parents were born in the 40s. My parents both graduated high school. Neither of them had a college education. And for my father, Education wasn't something that was in the forefront of his rearing. For instance, his father was more in tune to the fact that you had to till the land, you had to work hard, you had to do backbreaking labor to make anything of yourself. So he made some choices and decisions that totally impacted and shaped, you know, how my father actually worked. My mom, on the other hand, you know, you hear those stories about having to walk two miles, three miles, four miles. My mom actually drove us, you know, out to an area where she lived. And then I knew where the school was that she went to. And I was like, that's more than 5, 10, 15. That was almost 20 miles. I mean, it was a long, long way for a child to have to walk. And it would be raining. It would be, you know, cold all these different elements, but they push through. And here we are with all these modern conveniences. We complain. I mean, I watched my dad from the time that I can remember up until I graduated high school. He was working at the railroad. It wasn't an easy job. And it wasn't a job where you got a whole lot of people coming to you saying, oh, look, you did a great job, or here's a bonus for doing this, or here's a raise for doing this. Anything that he got, he had to fight for. My parents inspired me because they never gave up. They inspired me because they raised all of their children to want to be educated, to want to be more, to want to make a difference. 
to inspire others. And never once have I heard them speak negatively of any of us when we didn't do exactly what we thought we should do. So I say that because never once do I remember my parents ever saying, oh, I think you should be a blank. They always said, follow your heart and whatever it is you decide to be, be the very best and we'll help you in any way that we can. So even at 45 years old, if I were to go to my parents today and say, I want to start over, they would say, start over. Life is too short to be unhappy. They're not going to sit there and say, well, why do you want to start over? And that's silly. And why do you want to do this? And why? Mm -mm. My parents understand the importance of protecting your peace and your mental health. Because they didn't have necessarily that type of upbringing. And I'm not saying this to bash my grandparents at all, because this is a very different time. Imagine being raised in the 40s and 50s. In the 60s, you're an adult. And all the different things that were going on in the world. Imagine trying to find your way. My parents found their way. And not only did they find their way, they created three amazing individuals that are trying to inspire others in the world. And I just want you all to understand that you don't have to have a college education to be smart. My father built a car when he was a teenager from a junked car. So imagine going to a junkyard and picking a car and not knowing anything really about cars. You just go and you read books and you look at the engine and you start buying parts and you put it all together and then you drive it out of the woods one day. But you didn't have that kind of education. You weren't supposed to be able to do that. So me knowing that about my father, that he had the capacity to want to do that, there's nothing that I can't do because his DNA is in me. His mind is so strong and so clear. It's, it amazes me to see how my parents move and they're in their mid to late 70s. And <laughs> it's like, sometimes they remind me of stuff. I'm like, I don't even remember that happening. But then they'll bring it to my remembrance. So I'm grateful that I was allowed to grow up in a household like this. Because even though we didn't have, you know, a whole lot of whole, like, nice stuff growing up, it gave me the mind to want to do more, to do better, so I could give back to them for all that they had given to me, for me to be able to give to my community, to help folks who grew up like me, or help those children that were coming up, you know, in poverty, and I could say, you know what, let me give. Let me help these children. Having parents that had a love for community service and a love for others has just totally instilled that in me. I can remember going to nursing homes when I was a child and singing to the residents for their birthdays. My mom would take a cake. We would go to the nursing home and we would sing to them at the nursing home. And we would cut cake and we'd go to the rooms and do arts and crafts and things like that with them. And that, it's like, whose parents, you know, did those kind of things in the early 80s? Who was trying to mold their child to care for other people, for strangers? That is what truly inspired me about my parents the tenacity, that willfulness to want to serve others. The idea that they could make the world a better place.
by helping one person at a time. But just imagine, because they did it in front of us, this is what I saw. This is what I believe. And this is what I do. So if you're listening out there, what are you doing in front of your children? What are you showing them? What are you teaching them? How are you living your life? Think about those things because those things are extremely impressionable. Those things are what inspired me to be the adult, the person that I am today. So I've shared all of this to say, become the inspiration. There is something great. There is something amazing. There is something wonderful about you that only you can do to inspire others. Whatever that is, go out, show it, be the very best at it. And then watch how you change the world one person at a time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Embracing the Fight. I am Erica Lamar, your digital creator and host. Have an amazing, amazing day.